Welcome to episode 53 of Lost Signals. My name is Daryl. I am JD. <laughs> you sure are. It's funny. I am. Yeah. And, and so are you. You are Daryl. I, I am JD. De I definitely am Daryl. At least I think I am. Yes. I, I don't know. It's been a while. It, it has. You know, people have seen us lately, but not yeah. us doing a show together recently because our last two episodes have been interviews with uh, famous people. <laughs> then I think the next two might be with uh, people again. So more famous people. More famous. Exactly. People. Yeah. 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 So let, let's let's address that right away. That uh, this is not a change in format. It's just we've been given an opportunity uh, recently to talk to some incredible people. Yes. Uh, thanks to uh, Will, a, a great contact from uh, Season of Mist, and uh, we've had an uh, uh, interview with. Arcspire, uh, horrendous, and coming up very, very shortly, uh, an interview with uh, one of the members from Wormhole. And uh, like crazy. I said, this is not a change in format. It's just we're taking uh, an opportunity to uh, chat with other people. Oh, yeah, 100%. I mean, that's kind of where we always thought this was going to go anyways, like to, yeah. to get to that. But and it's just it's happening in a weird way. So like so we're still putting their content out, obviously, but uh yeah, exactly. Just, just in a different way. And yeah. we'll get right off the bat. And if, you, if you're watching the YouTube version of this or if you're, if you're watching us on Twitch or whatever, I announced this on Twitch a couple weeks ago. And because I was just, we were playing Grand Theft Auto one night. Yeah. Lost Signals is very happy to announce that we have our first sponsor and it is Homebound Brewing based in Warm in Saskatchewan. Tom there is a great dude. He makes great beer. And uh, does custom logos logos for like hockey teams and stuff because my hockey team that I'm uh, affiliated with got these made up for our hockey team. So we are the Cutter Tricky so Maroons, cool. and Tom made these up for us. So we're going to be able to sell these at our bar this upcoming season, and I think it's I think it's just pretty cool, and it's a really good beer. It's a, it's a really, it's a, it's a blonde ale. So it's really accessible to people. Mm. It, it tastes a lot like what you're used to, but it's made here instead of, you know, in like Vancouver. So, <laughs> or, or Montreal or, or whatever. So it's made down the road. Yeah. And you, you, you know, it's, we're live because Loki's barking like a dick in the background. Oh yeah. No, of course. Yeah. 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 The, the dog's always in on the conversation. Loki. Um, it was actually speaking of conversation, you know, like I, I had family dinner with uh, Alicia and her family oh, on Sunday. This is uh, this is being recorded on a Tuesday. Yes. And um, uh, like Alicia and I are just like sitting there. It's late in the evening. We're getting ready to have dinner. And like I have a cup of coffee because it's late and I'm a I'm a truck driver and a radio <laughs> personality. So I live on coffee. Yep. Um Alicia's having a glass of water. Her sister and her boyfriend, though, are both having beers. But her boyfriend's having a Coors, and her sister's having a local brew. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm like, ooh, what's that? I recognize that. That's blah, 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 blah. And yep. that's, is that the blah? And she, her sister looks at me and goes, you drink beer? I go, yeah, I just yeah. don't drink piss water. And I look <laughs> at her boyfriend and go, no offense. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's funny how many people take offense when like, and and it, and it goes both ways actually. You know, like yeah. like sometimes I have gotten offended by by dudes like ripping on the beer that I'm drinking. It's like, oh, why would you drink that shit? It's like, well, it's not shit. It's just your you know uneducated palate doesn't yeah <laughs> doesn't understand it. Exactly. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't go that far. It's just like I like buying local stuff, and we've talked about this ad nauseum over the years that yeah. I would rather buy something where I know where it's coming from rather mm. than, you know, something across the country. Yeah. Yeah. But, it, no, but that's absolutely. all, de that's all dependent on what you're buying too. Like, like, I, I, I don't know. Like if I'm buying like a, like beer from like a small craft brewery in like Vancouver or something rather than, you know, a big conglomerate. So no, no. And, and that's, that's, that's exactly my mentality too. Like yeah. when I go to the local beer and wine store, um, like I, if I feel like I, I having a beer, I will look for a name that I know yeah, and a name that is local and a name that is recognized. And then I look for it. Like, okay. Well, the yeah. selections for, you know, 
this month, this yeah. week, whatever. For, blah, blah, blah. For somebody like you, you're like if you can go to like like the BCLC stores or whatever, or like whatever they're called there, I can't remember what they are. No, 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 the BCLC. BCLC. You're right. yeah. Um, yeah. If they, if you can find singles, you know, like single cans of different beer, that's like for somebody like you, that's the route to go. Yeah. For, for me, it's not. Well, they, it depends too. Like yeah. it depends on the style of beer. Some beer I I will buy one of just to see if I'm I'm actually interested in that style of beer. Some mm. stuff like the stuff from Tom and at Homebound, I, I just, I buy four packs of it, yeah. or or forty eights, <laughs> right? Like, so funny yeah. story, I was in there uh, a couple weeks ago. They uh, they were doing a pig roast and whatever, and which is kind of kind of a cool thing to do. And I noticed they had um, remember like you would go to Boston Pizza and get like the like the big one like the big ass schooner of beer, yeah. So yeah. I, I noticed he had like two or three of them hanging up behind the bar. Maybe this is before the pig roast. So I asked Tom about it. It's like, so what's what's the deal with that? It's like, oh, you know, some guys have been bringing their own their own big glasses in, and they're just leaving them here, and then we charge them accordingly for it. <laughs> I'll be here on Saturday, and I'll be bringing my own. So yeah, I got my own big glass there. I think he charged that's me like cool. a, a beer and a half for it, which that's that's reasonable. I mean, it's a, yeah. it's a big ass glass. Like it's, it's like, it's just about a liter. So yeah. 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 But you could go to the place and go that one. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> like the, the people that work there, like this place is tiny and I think he's only got yeah. two or three, maybe three employees that, that will run the bar with him mm. and mm. they all know me. <laughs> so it's like, Oh, Hey Daryl, how's it going? You want your regular? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, don't, don't don't hang your head in shame. No, I know. Come I know, on, because no, no, it's no, because it's pretty cool. Like, and Tom's done mm. done us some a solid here. You know, like, yeah. not only just you know, like sponsoring the podcast first, which is pretty fucking cool, and then now like we're expanding into like you know where I'm I'm trying to get him you know drum up some business for him like with yeah. hockey teams and and whatever. So like, I got him some some business from this already. Like, because I posted it on my my Snapchat I, and it was on my on, on the Instagram page and. I got like seven or eight messages like, where is that from? How did you get this? I'm like, and the singer from one of my bands actually said, he's like, he called me. He's like, how did, how did you get that done? And I told him, it's like, you know, I just kind of just happened. He's like, would he do that for my hockey team? I'm like a hundred. Well, let me text him and find out. And then I'll let mm. you know. Like I texted Tom and then like 20 minutes later, he texted me back. He's like, a hundred percent. Give him my number. Set up. We'll do what we can. I'm like, why not? You know, like I just, it's our, well, it will probably end up getting lost signals beer made. Yeah. Well, okay. So, so on that topic, I just, I just had a synapse fire here. Oh God, here we go. Uh, a lost signals brew, but the label has to say I'm doing good. <laughs> that could be the tagline <laughs> at the bottom. A hundred percent. But Oh, for sure. Well, I'll, I'll like when you end up coming out here, yeah, you know, we'll have, I'll get 48 of them. Go for it. Okay. Okay, here we go. I'm doing good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing good. And then you can take a bite and, home. Cause yeah, and, I know that. And, and if, if, if ever, if ever this gets presented, you have to play him to clip. <laughs> like, oh yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. So yeah. I, I've actually, I've been in talks with him. I was like, I'm going to try and go and, uh, help him on a brew day during the mm. week and then ha be set up. Like I'll go and I don't have lav mics, but I'll go rent a couple lav mics and we'll just, we'll shoot a podcast episode. You might not be able to see us the whole time, but you should be able to hear us talking the whole time. Right. So, mm -hmm. so something, something that we're going to, we've been talking about. So we're going to try and get into that. So let's, uh, let's talk about the interviews we've, we've done here over the last two episodes, I guess. Oh, we'll start in chronological order. Yeah. Then uh, you had the honor of uh, speaking with one of the members from Arcspire. Yeah, uh, I got to speak with Mr. Dean Lamb. Uh, mm. If you don't know who Dean Lamb is, well, he's he is the guitarist from Arcspire, and uh, he has a pretty large YouTube presence. Like, I think he's got, he's probably close to a million followers on, on mm. YouTube. And lots of it is just him... Uh, like he like the he does all sorts of stuff. 
Remember what I was telling you before about like Loki chewing on a beer can? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Right before we went on the air, I was telling JD that my dog Loki likes to walk around with a beer can in his mouth. And that's exactly what he's doing right now. Because mm. he's a dumb shit. Anyway. Dean Lamb uh, has 99,000 subscribers plus, and uh, he does a lot of uh, of just learning guitar riffs and, and jamming with his uh, significant other, who is also a guitarist with a different band. I, I can't remember what band she's in. She's in, a, like, not, not a huge band, but in a fairly large band. I can't remember. It's not really that important. Anyway, anyway. so going into that interview, I was nervous as fuck. Like, no, I'm not splitting hairs here. Like, this is 100% true. Let's get into that interview. Well, it was after a night shift for me. Mm. And he, Dean had just got off, off a plane. So I got home and, like, and I, I set everything up. Everything was tested and working. I'm like, yep. well, the interview's not till, like, 11 my time. And it was, like, right. it was like 9. It's like, well, fuck, I better lay down for a bit. So I laid down for, I think it was, like, half an hour. <laughs> And I slept and I got up and did the interview and was like, and I said to him like right off the hop, it's like, you know, this isn't, this isn't my, this isn't going to be my best work just because I'm tired as fuck. And I'd like, have no idea what's going on. You know, like yeah. everything is really far away. So, but no, it went well. Like we chatted, yeah. it's 45 minutes or so. And we, uh, talked a lot about like death metal. And I realized now that I don't know a lot about death metal i thought i did i I know next to nothing but uh no that he was funny it's good time good talk you know like i I i'd like to interview him again at some point if if it ever works you know so Mm -hmm. yeah no you you guys got into uh like uh a lot of the inspiration for arc spire as well as like you know road life and their absolutely utterly incredible production value when it comes to their music videos which I mean, they go all out on on everything there. Oh yeah, like their their last two videos, like for uh, Drone Corpse Aviator and uh, Bleed the Future, are just absolutely nuts. Like the yeah. and and I I mentioned this in the interview with him. It's like uh, Bleed the Future reminds me of the Thing from 1982 yeah. with uh, Michael Doug Michael Doug no Kurt Russell. Yes, Kurt yes, Russell. yes. Yeah. And it, like the, just the vibe of the like the monster in the in the music video, it's like it, this is straight up, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Like it, and it well done. So, and so, we talked about this before too. It's like that the name for the podcast is in the credits, and it, because it was a Kickstarter, I still haven't got my Kickstarter stuff. <laughs> like the, the, we're talking six months here, like, and I finally got an email from Kickstarter the other day because I. Mm. I complained a couple times, you know, like over different, you know, well, you know, you, you put money into something and you're, you know, other people have gotten their rewards. It's like, okay, like figure it out. So yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. love you. Big fan. <laughs> love your work. Support it hundred percent. Yeah. Where's my shit? Give, just, just, give me, just give me my shit, man. Like, yeah, exactly. So, yeah. so supposedly it's getting taken care of now, but who the fuck knows? I'm, I'm not, I'm not like. I'm not holding my breath right now. Right. So, but yeah, I think after that interview, I went straight to bed, you know, cause I had, uh, I, th- I played a gig that weekend. Yes, you did. Yeah. So actually I'll, I'll, I'll get into this right now and then we'll get into your, your, uh, your, uh, interview here in a second. Sure. Sure. So yeah, the Saturday of that weekend, it was the end of August. Uh, we were at, a uh, a street party in Warman at our, our drummer's place. We've done it for the last five years. We get a bunch of booze and a bunch of food and a couple bands, and we play really loud. And it's always a good time. Um, and I fucked my knee up that night. Like, at the end of August, I fucked my knee up. And to this day, it still hurts. Like, I've been off work for a month now because of yeah. it. But... So what so kind of happened? What, that what night, is the injury? What well, is the it's injury? I. It, it's not. It's not like bursitis, but it's fluid on above my kneecap. Okay. So it's painful to walk. It probably has nothing to do with the fact that I'm overweight too. I 
No, we would never have anything to do with that. No, that's never. Come on. Come on. <laughs> As I'm drinking a beer. Um, mm. But I have to. I'm contractually obligated to do this now. So. <laughs> Drink homebound. Help us out. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So, like, yeah, played the gig. Woke up the next day and it was it was sore. But, you know, like, I was on my feet. I did, like, 15,000 steps. And probably 8,000 of them were in flip-flops. Mm. Just stupid, stupid idea. That's uh, that's what I contribute to my my knee injury. Mm. Then I ended up working. Uh, I was doing a couple days uh, doing a different job than I normally do. And I walked. Again, I was doing like 15,000 steps a day. And lots of it was in work boots on concrete. Mm. Didn't didn't help. And then, yeah, and, uh, yeah it was about a month ago. I finally... Uh, it was finally too much where like I was hobbling around. I couldn't, I couldn't do my job properly. Mm. So I called my, my supervisor that was at work. I'm like, yeah, I've been working hurt for the last month. He's like, don't mm. tell me that. It's like, well, what do you want? What do you want me to tell you? It's like, I'm telling you the truth. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> like, cause it, it wasn't like a worker's comp thing or anything. It's just that like, right. So, so yeah, that's yeah. fun. That's uh yeah. I was a, being a man. I rubbed some dirt on it. And now I'm telling you exactly. like weeks after the fact. <laughs> yeah. So I actually, I saw the nurse at, at work. Cause we have one that comes in Well, she works yeah. there all the time. And they were talking yeah. to her, talking to her the other day. And I told her, it's like, yeah, you know, like I don't even take like Tylenol or anything. It's like you men, you just don't, you don't, don't do that. So I'm like, I, I've never, I've never had a need to take Tylenol yeah. or anything. Even if I have a really bad hangover, I'll drink some water and I'll just tough it out. You know, I'll get some greasy McDonald's and then that'll be it. And then I'm fine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. But <laughs> my upset stomach takes away the pain from my <laughs> knee. Exactly. So that's kind of, that's kind of what's been going on with me with, mm. with that sort of shit lately. And yeah, so like I've been off work for a month now, hmm. maybe another month yet. I don't know. I got to, I've been trying to get into physio, but, uh, six to 10 week waits right now to get in. Holy shit. Yeah. So I, there, I got a couple more placing in a call tomorrow and see, but yeah, it's just not, not a, I, I don't understand why there's so many injuries or all these places are all just backed up right now, but whatever. Mm. So yeah. Interesting. It's um, something. Quick tangent. Have you ever worked injured? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've, so I've, I've driven big truck with a sprained ankle. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> I, I would, I would have gotten shit canned if they found out about this, but like driving big truck, middle of the day, uh, foot up on the dash. <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> but don't worry. Road, yeah. It was my clutch foot, oh, not okay. my gas foot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can still hit the brake if I need to. Um, I've driven, I've driven bus with uh, a broken hand and oh, like yeah. cast and the whole deal. Yeah. But I mean, like it's automatic. It was an automatic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, I, I was on a drilling rig with a sprained ankle that I sprained at work and I wouldn't go, I refused to go see a nurse. So I just hobbled around mm. and I was in a liability for like a week. That was bad. Mm. Um, I mean, I, I would never tell my mom this, but I mean, I just, I've been just about killed. Like, countless times like at work mm. at any of the jobs that I've done you know like you know so like in all sorts of near misses and shit over the year and it's not really what you're asking but it's like yeah you know like lots of times where I should have been dead but I wasn't yeah so. I hate that term I hate that term near miss it's like <sighs> near near miss phonetically suggests that you got hit it's an it's a near hit yeah because you you were missed but yeah anyway. yeah Right. Yeah, the, the the language there is kind of fucked up, but <laughs> it is. Right, it's Yay, English. Yeah, it's <laughs> stupid, stupid. Anyway, so, how was your interview with the dude from Horrendous? Uh, so, Alex uh, Kulik. Yeah, yeah. The the bassist from Horrendous. Uh, that was an absolute blast. Yeah, honestly. Yeah, like uh, what I watched of it, the the dude is funny. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He had a he had a good attitude of about things. <laughs> yes, he did. Yeah, yes, he did. Uh, it's interesting to learn like the musical background and the history and the interests of these bands who are uh, like uh, 
tech metal and death metal and yeah. slam and everything like that. He met the lead singer from Horrendous while working at a coffee shop. And both of them had appreciation for Charles Mingus, who is a world-renowned jazz musician. Okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's kind of fucked up. It's funny, but... It's, it's like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Fuck, like, yeah. Um, but uh, like, I'll, I'll be the first to admit, like, uh, when it comes to those genres of metal, like, I'm, I am not well informed, but I dove in head first. That's, and uh, that's part of the reason why you were you were a better choice for that interview than I was because I, I had no idea who these bands were, and it, and it's nothing against these bands, it just it just didn't. Well, yeah. no, you you had a better idea of uh, of of Art Spire than. Our arc spire than than I than I did, and yeah. so you were clearly a better choice for that interview than me. Yeah. The only reason uh, I was so well informed is because, and and I stated this in the interview, was uh, their most recent album was what I listened to when I was doing my cardio uh, earlier yeah. that day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, so I I had their their most recent album, uh, and I was like just going through cliff notes and and going through uh, social media seeing what their fans were saying about them yeah. uh, like checking out videos and stuff like that so yeah. that's like i went in studied because i wanted to like just make sure yeah. that i didn't go into this completely clueless and that's and, what uh, that's what i did with dean too like yeah i i did the, the exact same thing I, I went through all of their social media and like and i yeah. i listened to their shit nonstop for probably like three weeks yeah. Until it got to the point where, like, oh, it's all my Spotify was suggesting me. <laughs> it's like just this technical death metal all the time. It's like, perfect. Yeah. 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 So, uh, no, it was it was a lot of fun. Like, um, and I, I was, like, just like interviewing anyone else that I have interviewed in the past. You know, there is always that nervousness. There's always that, like, uncomfortability because, like, I'm talking to someone who is, you know, easily better known than me in certain circles yes. right um so there's always that nervousness but it was it was fun because the guy was so cool and laid back and just like energetic and, and ready to go and so it was it was a blast yeah. honestly to talk to alex and um i think the lost signals podcast crew and the media jack brand um have an open invite to any horrendous band oh, or any horrendous concert in the future tight yeah, I would go, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, yeah. I'm always up for, um, for new for listening to different stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah. So uh, there is another interview on the way. In fact, yes. uh, after we're done with this episode here, uh, I'm going to actually be doing the finishing touches on my interview with uh, Noni from uh, from uh, Wormhole, and uh, Wormhole is a band who invented and innovated the music genre of tech slam okay and uh again diving headfirst into everything with uh with uh uh the interview and the band <laughs> and I, I i discovered real quick that they have an absolute fandom for video games and cartoons yeah and have incorporated those into their songs yeah and is hilarious I, again like uh, i was listening to uh, one of the, the most recent album which has already gotten like a, a couple of sellouts on specific vinyls like it's really getting the attention of yeah. the tech slam world um there's uh there's SpongeBob SquarePants references <laughs> in these songs. There yeah. is uh, Courage the Wonder Dog. <laughs> That's great. Or Courage, sorry, the Cowardly Dog. Courage the Cowardly Dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, huh. That's it's just great. holy shit. But yeah, um, I, like I think that's pretty commonplace now. Like especially yeah. like, with people that are into that sort of thing. Like because even like what Dean Lamb was saying in my interview with him, he's like. It's like, yeah, you know, like I'm going to, I asked him like, so like, what's the rest of your day looking like in, in Vancouver for that day? Mm. It's like, yeah, I, I, I'm going to go out and do some stuff. It's like, I think I'm going to go play Baldur's Gate 3 later. I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah. Yeah. yeah you're a <laughs> nerd just like the fucking rest of us. So. Yeah. Oh yeah. That they are. Oh, actually, yeah. actually, that's, that's another thing too, is like every time I, like, so I, 
did the interview with Alex, of course, from my studio, and I did yeah. the interview with uh, Noni from uh, from Wormhole. And, and the first thing is like, dude, your video games. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, I'm here. Yeah. yeah, that's that's a definite so. collection. So it is, it is, and the computer is blocking a shit ton of it too. Oh yeah, so. but regardless, um, no, like the that interview actually, uh, I, like I said, I'm like minutes away from finish editing that one and putting it together, and then it'll be uh, posted both on this channel here and my channel, the Media yeah. Jack. And uh, there will be other interviews in the future. You've already got another one lined up. Yeah, we're uh, we're supposed to be doing uh, Sheldon Dingwall Part Two. Uh, I I messaged him a couple weeks ago. I guess a couple mm. months ago now, saying it's like I'd, I'd like to revisit the uh, the original interview I did because I I just felt like I just did not do it well. And he's like, yeah, for sure. So we'll, we'll, so on Friday afternoon, I'm supposed to be interviewing him again. So we'll we'll see that. See how that goes. I, like, I, 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 you did fine in the first interview, but I think, I think with practice and we've been at this for a couple of a couple of years now. I'm like, yeah, yeah. okay, now is a good time to go back and do a follow up. Absolutely, yeah, hundred percent. And they got some, yeah. they got some new stuff coming out that I want to ask him about. Yes. because, like, where is mine? Well, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> well, no, because they're they're releasing a new a new line. Well, not it's not new. But they're uh, they had a traditionally Canadian style of mm. bass that they had made like two styles actually it was, uh, it was their Super J and their Super P and I own a Super J and I've always wanted a Super P but I don't okay. feel like spending five thousand dollars on a guitar that I'm not going to play all the time. Right. They're making a Chinese version of the Super J and Super P, so it's going to be like half the price. Explain. So this one right here. Yes. Made in China. So what 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 happens is they they they've been doing this for like a decade. They they found a a place in China that builds these guitars out of Canadian and U.S. materials. So like they either source them themselves or or Dingwall sends them this. They build the guitars there in China. Mm. They mm. get shipped back to Saskatoon. They're completely stripped down and rebuilt and set up how they're supposed to be set up. And How does that happy. work? What do you mean? Oh, okay. Sorry, I, I got that confused. Okay, so they're all the raw materials materials are sourced from Canada, but it's all shipped to China. Then it's yeah. shaped, formed, sanded, mm -hmm. built, designed, painted, and everything. Then, yeah, and then brought back to Canada. Okay, okay. okay torn okay. completely sorry, I, down. Yeah, like like the pick, like everything is out of it. And then they go and they rebuild it. They resolder stuff. They put everything together the way it's supposed to. That's wild. Yeah. Kind of is. Hmm. But wow. So you can get a Chinese one pretty easily now to get a Canadian made one. You're looking at two years. Like I know, I know for a fact because a good friend of ours just ordered one a couple months ago. I'm not going to tell you how much he paid for it. That doesn't matter. <laughs> that's, that's his business. Yes. But yeah, he said like the wait times. Yeah, about two years right now from day to order to there's ways around that too. Cause there's mm. some dealers in the States that go and buy five or six slots and then just ah. they'll sell them to other customers if they want something sooner. Gotcha. So gotcha. It's still interesting. Yeah. <sighs> So much, money. <laughs> so much money yeah but i mean look at what you're getting right well that's true i mean i like I, I can't play anything else now that's the problem yeah. like if if i went to a, a sh like a you know house party and there say where there's a band there's like oh you know you play bass you want to come up and play it's like i would but i would be mad about it <laughs> yeah you know like because i wouldn't is this <laughs> well so a couple years ago i yeah went out to watch my now band practice mm. and have a couple beers. Under so, fire? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I was out there. I went out to the farm because like, Ken texted me. He was like, come out and have some drinks and whatever, you know, like was, hang out. So sure, I went out and, uh, said, yeah, you know, come, come, come play a song with us. And their bass player played a jazz bass. 
he had a fender though. Okay. So, it, but it, the neck is the similar to mine. Mm. My fingers hurt for three days after playing it. Really? Yeah. That much of a difference? Yeah. The action mm. was really high. The string tension was really high. So it's like you had to fight playing this thing. Where mine, I, I barely touch it. Oh no, no, no! I, I, you're, you're speaking my language, and I yeah. got a funny story behind yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. So, my, my guitar, my prize possession. It's a PV grind five string guitar. Yeah. Um, I, I, I paid way less than I should have, mm -hmm. but I got it at a screaming deal. But uh, I picked it up from uh, the local store, and they're like, "Do, you, do you have? Are you familiar with guitars?" Says, yes, I, I own a couple. Okay, so do you need help setting this up? It's like, no, no, it's fine, it's fine. So naive fucking idiot me, yep. um, bring this guitar home and start playing it. And like, yeah, it, it fucking hurts. And I got to reach and I can't like, it's yep. just, it's just too much. Right. So, uh, I took it to the radio station one day and, uh, in the creative department, there's a couple of guys who are a part of a band. Uh, and, uh, He's like, oh, is that your guitar? Cool. Can I, can I see it? Yeah, sure. So he zips open the bag and he pulls this thing out and goes, ah, that's cool. Action's a little high. <laughs> yep. I go, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah. And full well knowing in your head, was like, thank God there's somebody here to help me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Yep. He goes, yeah, your action is like, like three times the size <laughs> where it should be. You yep. should probably take it to the store and get it fixed. Yeah. So anyway, I, I take it back to the store that I got it off of. It was, again, like a screaming deal. And I was just happy to have it when I yeah. picked it up. But I take it back and I go, so, and I pull out the guitar. And the guy, his eyes become as big as saucers. He goes, why is it so fucking high? I, went, I don't know why he gave it to me like this. <laughs> oh, fuck. That's great. Oh, well, fuck. We'll fix this right away for you. <laughs> Man, by rights, they shouldn't have let you walk out the door with that you know yeah but like they're they're asking me questions that like assuming that a guy who owns a couple of guitars a fucking uh fender trainer and yeah. a, a classic right and like no I'm like no I don't you're asking me the right questions in the wrong person yeah you know? like, <laughs> like, i have no idea how to fucking set these up no never no my one guitar like my super j yeah. it has been in for a setup once and i've owned it for just about 12 years yeah. And I've never had to adjust it, but that's because it was built where I live. Ah, it's it's used to the climate change here. So yeah, yeah. No, it's like, but that's, that's great. Right. I, I brought that guitar home, and it's like it's it's like it's like shaking someone's hand yeah. now. Like oh, yeah. this is comfortable. Oh, it, ma it makes such no, a difference playing a guitar that's yeah. set up properly. Yeah, but yeah, I, I do I do want to wish you congratulations. Oh, for what the fuck did I do now? So, so this is behind the scenes, and I don't know if this is ever going to see the light of day. But uh, I currently have the Lost Signals YouTube channel up on my screen because okay. I'm just monitoring everything as I go. Yeah. Uh, there is a copyright claim. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Yeah. For uh, your band, Under Fire, featuring yeah. Daryl from Lost Signals performing Your Love by the Outfield. Apparently, you did such a good job that the band went, no, fuck you, that's ours. <laughs> I'm sure... Did you watch? Did you end up watching that? No, no, no. Yeah, I, yeah. I just noticed this now. Yeah. So, like, congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. So, yeah, like, I put it up because uh, the guys in the band want to see it. And it's unlisted because I never really intended it to be what yeah. it is. And then I was half snapped the other night. Oh, maybe I'll put it up and see, you know, see whatever. Then I, yeah, I noticed yeah. that there's a copyright strike on it. it it's not a strike. It's just. It's, it's a claim. Yeah. It's a claim. And I'm so, sure it's just because. Like, I wonder if it's actually like from the title or is it from like, or is the melody close enough? I never looked at the copyright, not no, strike. No, it, I'm, I'm looking at it right now and it is your love, sig single version, video uses songs, melody, uh, current uh, content found during time code 0. 0.00 to 3.22. So the whole thing. It is, it is the whole fucking song. That's, that's great. <laughs> Yeah, I saw that. I'm like, that's, it's, and that that's weird because like we don't play it in the same key as the original. Mm. Like we play it in the key of D, and I think it's actually an E. It's actually like, like a, an octave, not an octave, but like it's two or three notes higher. Like, so we play it lower, but then I still sing it pretty fucking high. But it's like, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of it's kind of weird. 
So I'm listening to it right now. You guys are like on on par. Oh, and I, I like thought, it. I thought we didn't play that well that night, actually. Oh, excuse me. No, no, no. That that's a sing along song, man. You did well. Anyway, congratulations. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, did is the other notification up there? The uh, we had ten thousand unique views. Oh, I did see that. Day. Yeah, eleven yeah. days ago. Yeah. Yeah, so thanks to everybody watching and not watching and listening and, you know, and whatever. And yeah, so we're 10,000 views, which is, it's something. It's awesome. Yeah, it's yeah, good. No, good. It's awesome. Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. It's, it's small, small step. Small, tiny steps. It's fine. Steps forward is, is what oh, yeah. matters, right? Yeah. And we're still having fun doing this. Oh, so that's all that really it matters, just, too. Sometimes we don't get to do it for a month or two at a time. But no, yeah. I'm, I'm glad we sat down tonight. Um, Let's, uh. Let's talk about wrestling for a few minutes here. Sure. So there's been a couple of changes. Yeah. So the uh, the the pop that Edge, the the artist formerly known as Edge, now known as yeah. Adam Copeland, yeah, that he got when he came out at Wrestle Dream last month, was uh, I I I didn't know what to expect, mm. but like I never thought. I would see him in AEW, but I'm kind of glad I did. Yeah. Like it's a, uh, it's a big change. Yeah. Man, it's, it's just weird. He, he's it, never stepped in a different ring. Never. That's just it. Never. Right. Like ever since his debut, he's always been in WWE, WWF, WWE. Yeah. And, um, you know, Christian, uh, has bounced around and had some yeah. fun and made pack cash some checks and mm -hmm. like he's he's doing well on this uh, weird I'm your daddy arc mm. uh, in AEW. It's so, very weird. Yeah. So Edge is like like he's he's in his his sunset. Like he's oh, yeah. doing what he wants to do. Yeah. Yeah. It, and it just I wonder if it's weird for them because like I like I keep reading like how how big the crowds are for for some of these shows. And mm -hmm. like the one that it, it, they're all hovering around the same amount of people that were at the Saskatoon show that Lee and I went to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and Lee's on assignment this week. And by assignment, I think he's sitting on his couch because he broke his tailbone. So, hey, Lee. How am I the only one not injured? <laughs> like, <laughs> you're, you're the only one that goes to the gym out of the three of us. So maybe that, well, that's yeah. it. That's probably it. I've got, I've got news on that later, but anyway. Okay. Um, but yeah, seeing... Edge in AEW was a, it was a trip. Mm. Um, I still don't know if I like it or not. Mm. But yeah, like I, like I was alluding to, like like the the, the crowd sizes are small. So like I'm wondering, like what's going through his head. Now that he's there, and you're you're playing to like, I call it playing, but you know, like to to like half the people, like that that's got to do something to. Like, just just how you perceive it, right? Like, it's got to be a little bit different. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. It 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 is it is, it is a little odd, um, and it is kind of heartbreaking to to see the crowds that you know the size of the crowds at these AEW shows. I mean, like they they took the effort to to make that tour across Canada and yeah. hit the towns that don't get the attention. Right, yeah. and so, like, it, it's it's a little tough, but yeah, it, it does make you kind of wonder, like, what does but what like, is Adam Copeland and what is Christian Cage and and Jericho like? What what? How does this make them feel? But you know, like, it's it's different though because like they just did all in or all out or whatever the hell, whichever one, because all their their pay per view naming schedules are kind of fucky. But the, <laughs> the, 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 yeah, I, whatever. Like, I think it was all in that they did at Wembley in the UK. And like, there's just about 80,000 people there. Mm. Like, so that's got like just a huge stark contrast from, you know, Saskatoon with, you know, 3,000 or 4,000 people to 80. Mm. It's, it's, it's a big difference. Yeah. So that's true. I don't know. But yeah, like, I, I am. I, 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 I'm, <laughs> I can tell you, I can tell you from my own personal experience, like I've, 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 been in front of a packed house and I've been in front oh, yeah. of a staggered crowd. Yeah. And from my own personal experience, it, it doesn't matter. Like I'm still 
still out there. I'm still, you know, grabbing people's attention. I'm still having a good time. Yeah. Um, you know, a loud packed house is amazing, but at the same time, getting a reaction out of a small scattered crowd is just as amazing. Oh, no, I, I get that for sure. You know, like, yeah, but I personally think, and it, cause I, like I've done that too, you know, like I played, I've played shows to nobody and I played, you know, in, in front of like three or 4,000 people too. Mm. And I always find that I put in just a little bit extra yep. when, when it's full, you know, and that may be why my knee is fucked up now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he he doing David Lee Roth high kicks. Or... I, you know, like I was jumping that night, and mm. it's probably not a good idea. So, I... yeah. Um, what else is in wrestling news other well, than the fact that uh, Sting's retiring? Vince... Sting's retiring. Uh, Vince McMahon has had has had all the power uh, pulled from underneath him. Thank fuck! It's about time. We've been talking about this for years. It's about time yeah. that, that Vince just gets the fuck out of there, you know, yeah. like, and no send off, no nothing. It's just like, this is not go, your job anymore. Leave. Get the fuck out. Yeah. You know, yeah. I like that. Other than that, no, there's been nothing really interesting that's happened in wrestling. Oh, I mean, like Cena is back and the rock was back there for a little, for a minute. Yeah. And that's like a, whatever, but uh, yeah, whatever. It, it's I I give it a passing glance every once in a while, and also yeah. Yeah. when the WWE keeps bringing Logan Paul back in, oh for like, fuck's sake, I'm checking out. Like I am so <laughs> fucking sick of him. Just like yeah. go away, just, just <laughs> go away. You and your dumb shit brother, go make some you know shock <laughs> you know videos in like J- Japan Suicide Forest again. Try yeah. and get yourself canceled again because you're just you're useless. Like you, yep. you bring yep. nothing good to society. Like, and you and your idiot friends should just, just fuck off already. Just here's 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 the one takeaway that I I have from Logan Paul, and it it's just he is. <laughs> I can tell you're ag- ag- agitated. So I I am a fan of uh, online uh, content when it comes to media and news and and reputable sources. Uh, Philip DeFranco, uh, as well as uh, uh, Internet Today, my favorite uh, online sources when it comes to news because like they they do their research, they do their yeah. homework, they're well informed, but also like they got a fucking sense of humor. Um, yeah. <laughs> Philip DeFranco interviewed Logan Paul uh, recently, actually within the past year. And um, like it was a, it was a one-on-one conversation about some sort of situation and the Paul brothers helping out a, uh, a community that was just hit with a, uh, a natural disaster. And uh, Logan Paul kept saying that uh, he really respected Philip DeFranco because he was always being a biased news source, a biased news source, a biased news source. He said it like three or four times. And finally, Philip DeFranco is like, I think you mean to say unbiased. And yeah. Logan Paul goes, oh, yeah, I wrote that wrong in my notes. Oh, like, my you're God. reading from a fucking script, you Jesus asshole. Christ. And you don't even <laughs> like, you don't even know the difference between unbiased and biased. <laughs> like, fuck off. You know, like there's that that saying, and that used to like you used to see it spray painted around places and see it online. It's like stop making stupid people famous. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Right? <laughs> you know, and you know, like okay, so let's talk about stupid celebrities here. This is a completely off topic, and yeah, nothing yeah, we had planned. But okay, but let's let let's talk about this for a minute because like yes, there's the the drama that happened with with Jada Pinkett Smith in the last couple of weeks. You know, like with. It's I like, missed that one. So oh, me well, her and Will Smith have been separated for like eight years and that Tupac was her soulmate and this and that. It's like, holy fuck. It's like every time you turned around, there was another Jada Pinkett interview with some celebrity. It's like, why in the fuck are you even interviewing her anymore? She's a crazy bitch. And then okay. do you follow Britney Spears on Instagram? <laughs> no, but I do know what you're referring. Oh, boy. <laughs> so... Remember when everybody was kind of, you know, like, you know, 
let Britney like leave Britney alone and like let her yeah. let her be free and shit. It's like I don't think she ever should have been let go on her own. That bitch is nuttier than squirrel shit. Like, oh boy, like so. I saw the knife. I saw the knife dance. Yeah, and it was just this is unnecessary. So, so the people that don't know about this, like I was, I was sitting on my couch the other day and I was doom scrolling or whatever, and uh, yeah. And yeah, I follow Britney Spears because like it's it's because it's like watching a train wreck. Mm. But yeah, she's dancing around with knives, and I think she actually caught herself at one point. Like she might have en- ended up bleeding or something. But like, oh, she was wearing a bandage. I remember that she was wearing yeah. a bandage. I don't know why. But like, uh, yeah, every day, like there's she's just dancing around in her underwear, and that's you know like she's just like every other girl that's on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna right? say like yeah. not not that's every other gr- anything else, but yeah. every other yeah. like person that wants to be a an influencer or whatever that's what they do yeah Yeah. but man okay so so why okay so answer me this i I don't know if i'm answer me this question why was she dancing around with knives who the fuck knows i know do you i know i know (laughs) and i i know it's because there was recently a video shot of uh, shakira performing with a dance troupe when she had these knives and it was some sort of ceremonial purpose okay. and these knives or daggers or what have you i'm not sure if they were props but they were there to represent something so okay. britney spears was trying to copy mimic pay tribute to shakira but the, <laughs> shakira had very specific knives Britney Spears had fucking knives out of the cutting block. <laughs> she had, she, she literally tell people like, like literally they, they were fake. Knives. Like, no, they weren't. I have that one. Like, <laughs> fuck. Like, you know what? I I liked Britney Spears. You know, in the sense that you know, like, she was a good-looking girl when she came out. Her videos were interesting, and I say this as somebody that's the same age as her. But man, yes. she's got to like. Get the fuck off of Instagram because like you're well, and the thing is like she shut comments off on everything. So all it is just her. So like, it's just her in her own head. Like she's not seeing anything else. So like, oh, man, I don't know. Well, there's also the, the, the whole, or the, the rumor that she's dead and that the, the person doing all this stuff is actually her sister with a filter on her face. No, yeah. no, no. James yeah. Spears yeah. and Britney Spears look completely fucking different. Yeah. But with a filter on, you can Whatever. make yourself look like anything, right? I don't know. I don't. Be- I don't believe it either. No, no. <laughs> I just think she. I just <laughs> no, 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 think no, no, she's no. fucking crazy. So yeah, it's all that matters. Uh, speaking of dead celebrities, oh here we go. Uh, I I stumbled across something. Every once in a while on on YouTube, you'll you'll like you'll load up YouTube and then it'll it'll automatically go to home, which is like yeah. best most suggested. Blah 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 blah. Well, I I, like, I never get that. I. I'll explain to you why later. Yeah, I'm okay. Fair, yeah. fair enough. Well, well, whenever I yeah. open up YouTube, it takes me to the homepage, yeah. and sometimes it's like, oh yeah, I okay, that's that's from someone I follow. Uh, that's that's a video I haven't seen in a while. And then every once in a while, I was like, what the fuck is this? And it was a uh, uh, breaking news: Clint Eastwood passes away. Blah 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 blah. blah. And I'm like, what the hell? So I I click on it, and it is first dead giveaway. The voiceover is AI. Yeah. Usually Second AI is, with an like an, an Indian accent. Sometimes that happens. So, uh, it was I I just I just heard the tone and it was like immediately it was AI. Yeah. Like okay, immediately red flag. Secondly, it was all stock footage. And yeah. and then third, <laughs> the video was actually posted to YouTube 3 weeks ago. Hmm. But it was released the day I saw it. And <laughs> okay. there all these comments were like, oh my God, he was a legend, blah, 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 blah. Rest and I'm looking peace. and I'm like, he's not dead. He's and then o- so he's old, he, like, but he's not dead. No, yeah. he's not dead. So I go yeah. to the YouTube channel and it's like, Jeremy Renner passes away. Uh, <laughs> Shakira passes away. Jesus. It's all this shit. And it's yeah. all AI generated. Like, we, you know, we, we talked about with all this people? AI shit though. Like, as, like we talked to, like uh, was a couple months ago that, there was, I was in a safety meeting and I, we were watching a yeah. video and it was all AI. It's like, it's, it's everywhere now. It's disgusting. Yeah. As, as soon as I hear any video with an AI voice, I, I immediately like, nope, fuck you. Oh yeah. I'm out of that. Sh- I, I just, I, I don't want to, 
I don't want to like support any of that shit. Um, yeah. Yeah. Bullshit. Stupid AI. It's gonna take all it's gonna take our podcast job here pretty soon. <laughs> never. No, 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 no. No. It's it, never gonna happen. No, and it it's the same argument that I've not argument, but conversation I had before when uh satellite radio this this is uh, when Sirius XM or when Sirius was launched, XM was still to come. Uh, yes. The conversation was yeah. like, "Oh, you have an interest in radio? Like, what are you going to do and since Sirius is going to uh, take over the market? Like, Sirius is never going to take over the market ever." No, but it, it's it, it's not that it would ever take over, but it, it's it's definitely still there. Yeah, you know, no. like it, and it's still like it's a it's a definite niche market that. I mean, I've been a Sirius subscriber on and off for twenty years. My car comes with satellite radio like yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like i i listen to why well, fuck i listen to the competition <laughs> you know, like, yeah <laughs> yeah like, whatever but but just like just like uh the conversation of satellite radio versus uh terrestrial radio ai will never take over no podcasting because, no god no like, um it, it'd be impossible if, if ai were ever to get that far we're in serious fucking trouble and podcasting is the last thing to worry about we'll be looking for you know like it'd be like living in the fallout universe exactly yeah that's yeah that's a video game reference if, in case anybody didn't get that but they're releasing a trailer about the series of fallout in the very near future uh what's it gonna be on netflix think amazon okay i can get behind that i would watch it i mean, I mean <laughs> the only fallout game that i really played was fallout shelter because <laughs> i just I, <laughs> I never got into the other ones <laughs> fallout shelter was very addictive yeah, yeah and, um, and and i'm actually playing it on my switch not right as we speak but i am playing it right now i started a new a new uh a new vault so yeah yeah i played fallout 4 uh, and uh, love that game. Uh, I own them all. There's a, there's... Hey? I own them all. You own them all? Fallout 76? Uh, it's on Game Pass right now, so yes. Yeah, I was going to say, again, like, there's a, it's on Game Pass, and also like there's a free play weekend or whatever. It's like, I, Man. You, you just, like, I have soured so much with that game. That I just, oh, I'm I'll, not I'll, even I'll never play it. But like the, yeah. just to, off topic quick, but the amount of shit that's going to be on, on Game Pass in the next little bit, gonna be worth the money oh 100 percent acquisition of activision yep 100 yeah. percent. like like there's gonna be lots of shit on there like i'm wondering if the new destiny or is destiny still by activision okay uh, yeah and yeah so i right. wonder no, if... well, no 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 destiny separated from destiny oh uh, it's bungie yeah, Bungie. Yeah, so Destiny separated from Activision. They threw a party because they became their own entity again. But they're um, still owned by somebody. I think. No, they're independent. I mean, they're well, they're they're Microsoft, but like, Bungie but I'm just Bungie. What I'm wondering is if the new expansion is going to be like for Destiny Two is going to be on Game Pass. I doubt it, Ooh. but that would be awesome. Um, I have a hard time getting back to that game. I am so hooked on other games right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's the same. It's Bungie. So. Yeah. 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 Okay. When, when Activision, when, like, so when Bungie bought themselves out and became independent from Activision, like, they, there was a turning point for the game and the company. Well, the game is a shadow of what it used to be, for sure. Yeah. Too. yeah. Like, like, during. During the, the lockdowns and shit, when we played the fuck out of that game. Oh, yeah. That was different. It was a different yeah. time, though. Because, I mean, because yeah. it takes so long to do shit in that game, but it didn't matter then because you had all day to do nothing. Yeah. I have, there's, there's one thing, one thing, uh, it's not necessarily a sticking point. I just never had the opportunity. I've never done a raid. Well, we can still set that up. Cause I like I, I've only done one myself. Yeah, we just need to find a couple people that want to do it. Yeah, like I've I've done portions of raids. Like I did that whole like oh make it to this dome before you fucking freeze to death thing and oh yeah, and don't yeah. fly off the cliff and <laughs> like but now I've I, never done a raid. Yeah, well that's something we should talk to Tyler mm. about. But yeah, yeah, Tyler, Tyler, 
Tyler. <laughs> He's going to Columbia on Friday, though, so. Yeah. So we're, we're, well, we're like, we just tra- celebrated his uh, wedding anniversary. Yeah, it was today. Yeah. A year ago today, I was in Mexico, and it makes me mad yeah. because I'm here. And it snowed last night, too. Oh, of course it's not did, much, yeah. like, not even an inch of snow. So, yeah. I've got news about Mexico. Oh, God, here we go. I'm going to Mexico. Nice. You've never, <laughs> you've never been though, right? I've never been. There is an entire fucking episode about me never going to Mexico. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So well, my family, I'm sorry. My first word of advice is that when you get off the airplane, put your wallet in your front pocket. Oh, my wallet's always in my front pocket. Okay. Just yeah. making sure. No, nothing ever goes in my back pocket. The only thing that goes in my back pocket is my girlfriend's hand. Mm, that's fair. <laughs> that's yeah, you better put her hand, hand in your front pocket because they might steal yeah, her. Well, too. yeah, I know it's a lot more fun up there too. But regardless, <laughs> um, no, uh, Alicia's family is like, "Hey, why don't we all do a family vacation?" I went, "Okay, that sounds cool." And they, they said, "Let's go to Mexico." I'm like, "Yes." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then, then, then came the questions like, where do you want to go to Mexico? Like, we can go here, we can go here, we can blah, 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 blah. JD, what do you think? I think Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> I like Mexico. That's it. That's yeah, all you yeah. have to say. That's, yeah. Let us go to Mexico. I come too. So, yeah. So, you'll fly from Prince George to Vancouver, then direct probably. Right. Do you know where you're going? Uh, it sounds like the conversation is Puerto Vallarta. Nice. Yeah. Yes, I haven't been there, but I've heard it's really nice. This, the ocean is a lot choppier, I believe, on that side. Because mm. I think that's like ocean, ocean side, if that right. makes sense. But Yeah, yeah. Oh, and it'll actually be a shorter flight for you two then. Oh, cool. Yeah, because okay. it was six hours for us to go to Cancun from Vancouver. And that was a, that was a long flight. I was mad by the end. Both, 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 both sides, or like both ways. I was mad. Well, we like the the way home. It's like we we talked about that. It, I don't, like yeah, yeah, yeah. That was just bad. But should we should we wrap this up? Or sure, get, if you want. We got anything? I don't think I got anything else. Oh, yeah. We'll touch on this quick. Oh, okay, so we haven't talked about football on this season at all. I don't think. Mm. Uh. Well, and that's fine too because like my team sucks, so bad, mm. so bad. Yeah, that uh, they lost and they're out of the playoffs. They fired the head coach yesterday. They oh did, wow! They, <laughs> okay, they didn't fire the rest of the people that they should have. Mm. Like they should have fired the president and CEO, and they should have fired the uh, the GM. Mm. But they signed the GM to another three years, which is depressing. But mm. whatever. Hopefully next year it'll be better. So that, that's all I got. That's all I'm. That's all I'm going to say about the Riders this year because it's over. It's over. It's well, all... the Lions are still in the mix, but they they won a game or they lost a game last weekend that they should have won against the Calgary Stampeders. Oh, yeah. And now, as it stands, uh, the Calgary Stampeders are firmly in the way of uh, the BC Lions moving to the Western Final. I think BC <laughs> just took their foot off the gas for the last part of the season. I th- think they did. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So. That's that's who I'm cheering for now. The Lions. Yeah, we yeah. We could use all the support we can take. <laughs> well, yeah. Just I, I can't cheer for Calgary because I hate Calgary. There's no fucking way in hell I would ever cheer for Winnipeg, ever, ever. Mm. And and I I won't cheer for a team out of the East. I just won't. I know. No, that's fair. Yeah. Yep. So no, I'll be a a, a Lions fan by. By proxy, I guess. That's fair. Yeah. So, which songs by... Oh, shit. What was that, that first band's name? What songs are you adding to the Found Signals playlist? Because I, I just thought about this. I added the song mm-hmm. I was going to add... The one song I was going to add, uh, like, three weeks ago. I put it on the playlist already. So. No. <laughs> you're, you're, you're thinking ahead that far. Well, just because I, I knew the second that it dropped out, that was going to... That's actually the name of this episode. And it's... uh. Mnemonic by Intervals from the new album. Oh, nice. Yes. Okay. Um, so just just for clarification, for anyone who'd like to hear uh, the playlist that is forever building on every episode of Lost Signals podcast, all you have to do is go to Spotify and search for Found Signal... Sing- <laughs> found, found Signals. Signals. 
what I get for saying singles all day. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, found signals, found a lost signals, signals playlist. Yeah, the lost signals playlist. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to pick uh, the title track off of the brand new album from Horrendous, and that is Onological, Onological Mysterium. And um, it's like it's made me a fan, honestly. Onological Mysterium by Horrendous. It's the title Ont- track. Ontological. 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 Yeah. Yes. Okay. Title okay. track off their brand new album. Cool. Yeah. Uh, and then add your second one if you want. Or are you going to add uh, the, from the the other interview in the next episode? Oh no no! I'll 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 add something off of Wormhole right now because I was planning on doing it. Okay. Um. So, uh, what I'll do is I'll add something from Wormhole's uh, uh second, uh, most recent album, and uh, I think you should look at the uh, the album cover because uh, as I bring up in the interview, the album cover for the weakest among us has strong strong uh feelings of metroid oh yeah 100 yeah. percent. yeah so i'm gonna pick the title track from that album the weakest among us good pick good pick yeah and i'm, I'm definitely gonna give that a listen because it seems it seems interesting the, yeah yeah my second and one I'll, is I'll, or, sorry go ahead no and, and I'll, I'll pick another wormhole song uh uh next time after the interview right. with uh noni airs good call so my second one is a weird song from a weird band that just popped up on, uh, what playlist is this? Um, the Canadian Road Trip uh, public playlist on Spotify. And uh, who the fuck, one of the guys from Blue Rodeo made it. And there's oh. all sorts of weird shit. I'll send you the link. Sure. And like, there's all like, like all, it's all just Canadian stuff. But there's a band on here that I had heard on, the Verge on Sirius XM, okay. the the all Canadian channel, and it is uh, I can't even read my own fucking writing, uh, but it's Winter Sleep. You ever hear that band? They're they're pretty no. like they're kind of folky, like uh, not like like not as lame as like Mumford and Sons, okay, you know, but like a little bit better. And the song is called Weighty Ghost, and it's kind it's kind of like that same that vibe. But it's uh, it's pretty interesting. So I'm gonna add that. I'm gonna listen to it right now. Yeah, it's it, it's a good track. I I think anyway. But it's kind of like it, it's very different from the songs that you added. But it's got a different like it's a different feel to it. Like it's <laughs> completely yeah. I, I can hear that. Yeah. Fucking fucking horrendous <laughs> wormhole. Here's winter sleep. Yeah. <laughs> but that's just proof that we got a lot of different fucking songs on this on this playlist exactly yeah all right okay so this has been episode 53 and i had to think about that again because we're all kind of fucked up here so my name's daryl i'm jd we will see you guys out there and take care go drink homebound brewery beer or i'll fight or i'll fight you (laughs) yeah i will punch you in the freaking throat right in the (laughs) mouth And I guess, I don't know what, something, just having gone through that experience, something changed. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember from the get-go, that second one was like, oh, this is the kind of music we're trying to make. It's text slam. Gotcha. It's kind of, it's kind of like uh, watching, kind of like watching a TV series that just launches, right? It's the first couple of episodes where you're kind of like, okay, you have my attention, but where are we going with this? It's not until you you find your stride that you actually like. This is where we are. This is where we're headed. This is the story we want to I tell. S- I skip season one of The Office every single time. <laughs> really? <Yeah. laughs>